angry guy here and men are telling other men to become password bros and never return to Western countries. Yeah. Men are telling other men to become password bros and never return to other countries. Today we're going to be looking at a video where this guy basically says why I threw away my life in America and came to the Philippines. So a lot of guys are basically walking away from Western society entirely, and they're telling other men to do this as well. A number of guys, lots of guys who are able to work remotely are now working remotely from any place in the world and starting new lives over there. And they're finding the life that they're having in these countries to be superior. They're, as long as they focus on living a high quality life, but not constantly chasing more and more and more, they're living extremely comfortable, extremely happy, and they're finding extremely high quality women over there that share traditional values, want to be relationship in relationships, want to be mothers that cook, clean, are affectionate, and they're very happy. So let's go ahead and just jump into this. So why I threw away my life in the West to come to the Philippines at 45 years old. In America, the they teach us you work until you're 65. When you're 65, you get to enjoy eight years until the average death age of 73 or 74 years old in my country. Um, basically, I reject that thought. Um, in the age of digital nomad and YouTube and making digital money, that is kind of a silly thought. Um, I had been unhappy in Las Vegas, Nevada, where I was residing for quite some time. And I had attempted to move back to my hometown, Thousand Oaks, California. And one of my exes kind of begged me back and I went out there only to realize that she was just too masculine for me and that um, she looked her age and had put on weight and really it was just mainly just her masculine attitude um i wasn't interested in dating uh someone that was that manly so i essentially um broke it off with her but then i still ended up moving out there after i'd gone out there on a bit of a discovery trip to go reclaim my status in my hometown and i went back and i got an apartment and I met another girl who was happening very easily. Um, she was a great girl, much more feminine, much younger, in better shape, beautiful blonde girl, Marie. But in the end, uh, uh, it wasn't gonna be for me. Um, I just kinda had had it with the West. I wasn't, uh, I was no longer interested in the masculine women, the pricing, and all the things I've mentioned in previous videos. So I went back to Las Vegas, Nevada, and I was miserable. I was miserable for quite some time. I got back into my business, started dating again, kept things going, and uh, I was essentially completely miserable. And I realized that I needed to make a change. I had been thinking Thailand for quite some time, had a Thai ex, had many Asian exes, and had been planning this move for a while but I hadn't been financially set up in the past. So what happened was I essentially decided I was gonna do it. So I rush renewed my passport. I uh, started to kind of drop little hints to my dad and my sister, the only people that I really cared about, told some girls that I know. And uh, you know, the, it ranged from, you know, you're going there for girls to I wanna go. It was kind of mixed feelings on that stuff. And uh, I didn't really care what people thought or what their take on it was because it was about making me happy. So essentially what happened was I decided that I was going to research Thailand. So I got on YouTube and got on the internet and started researching Thailand. And looked great, looked like fun but it also looked to have an inner element of pay for play and women using men, as does any country in Southeast Asia, especially a poor one. 
but you know, I, I was still moving forward with my plan for that. And then I discovered Philippines. I uh, really did a little test run on the dating sites when I was getting real close. And uh, I just discovered that the women in the Philippines genuinely wanted to meet you and that the women in Thailand were offering boom, boom, short time. I noticed that every girl on Thai Friendly was a freelancer. Every girl on Tinder in Thailand was a freelancer. Basically, every girl was a freelancer, period, point blank. Um, so I said, you know what? I better just go to the Philippines because when I got on the Philippines dating website, every girl just wanted to meet you. Every girl just wanted to know you. Do they like you? You're financially secure. They certainly do. Could you get caught up in a long con in the Philippines? You certainly could. Um, but at the end of the day, I decided to throw my life away in my best earning years to come to this turquoise water and enjoy myself and do YouTube and just live a stress-free life. I was so stressed. I was just probably going to have a heart attack or something. I could. So, guys, I want to talk to you about what he said here. So he decided to come to the Philippines after living in the United States. He threw everything away, his best earning years away. So your best earning years for a man, for a man is, is in his 40s. Your best earning years will be in your 40s. That's when you'll earn the most amount of money typically in your life. And the irony here is that a lot of millennial men, especially, they, they're miserable. All right. How many of you guys are in your 30s and now in your 40s and your and life is just miserable for you? Some of you have a lot of money. Some of you have a decent amount of money. But what is it really doing for you? You know, money is not everything. Money can facilitate happiness, but money cannot buy you happiness. And really, if you're in an environment where the only thing you have is your money, that's miserable. For those of you that, that are that are happy like that, like you're like, I have my money and I'm happy and I'm just gonna sit here and count my money. <laughs> I mean, guys, what's the point what's the point of having lots of money if you're just sitting in a if you're just sitting inside in a place and saying, Well, at least I don't have to worry about bills and I'm just gonna play video games all day long. That's not living. If that's living for you, if staying inside all day and just playing video games all day is living for you, that's fine. More power to you. But there's more to life than video games. And I love video games. I, I love my Nintendo Switch. I absolutely love my Nintendo Switch. But there's more to life than video games. Being able to go out and just feel comfortable and 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 not have people harassing you and not and 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 being and, and having a friendly people. Now something important he said that could some you know could are there people who will pl play the long con? Absolutely, you'll meet people in these countries and they'll they'll play the long game. Oh yeah, they'll pretend to be your friend. They'll pretend that they're interested and they will play the long game with you. That's the reason why you have to know what you're doing. This is why you don't just settle on one woman. You date and you get to know the person over a long period of time. And another thing is you have an attorney. I'm going to be putting together a package for you guys so that you guys will understand how to do things overseas. I've lived overseas. I've made mistakes overseas. I have lost money overseas. God only knows. All right. And I'm going to share with you all the things that I learned so you don't experience that. One of the things you're going to do before you even go overseas is you're going to have an attorney. You're going to know if you're going to the Philippines, you're going to know which attorneys you can use in the Philippines before you even get on that plane? You're already going to have a you're already going to have an attorney on retainer. You heard me on retainer, or you're going to at least have made that contact, and you're going to have done your research in advance. So I'm going to be putting together a package for you guys to learn all of these things. You're going to also have you're also have, going to have done your research, so you're going to know what expat communities are over there, and you're going to know how to find them, how to find people who are from your country or from other countries, pr pr uh, predominantly white Western countries, and you're going to make contacts with these people, okay? And you're going to build relationships. Sometimes you'll build relationships with these people before you even step foot there, all right? You're, this way you're going to know. So once you go to this country, you're not going to be alone. 
You're going to already know people over there and, they're, and, they, and they care about you. I'm going to tell you the reason why they care about you because they want you to care about them. Because when you're a foreign person in a foreign country, all of a sudden, you that's when you become family because you are from that country. You're from another country, all right? If you're, it doesn't matter if you're white, you're black, you're Asian or Hispanic. If you're all from America and you're in a foreign country, guess what? You are foreigners. So you're all in that together. So you are going to develop a sense of kinship because you want to have their back and, you, and you're you going to have their back because you want them to have your back, all right? So that's what's going to happen. So you're going to learn how to do those things. You're also going to learn how to have a lawyer on retainer. You're going to learn how to find, you're going to learn how to find a lawyer. You're also going to learn how to have a lawyer back in the States. We're going to work on all of that. I'm putting together a package for you guys, all right? I'm also going to tell you how to know when someone's lying to you, what to do, what are the signs. Sometimes there won't be any signs whatsoever, but there it won't appear there won't appear to be any signs. But once one very important sign is when people want to do so, when people offer you something for free over there, or they're trying to be very helpful suddenly. These are these are warning signs. These are warnings. These are warning signs. Now, don't get me wrong. There's some people who are just very genuinely kind. You can tell, but there are ways to tell. There are ways to tell. And I'm going to begin teaching you guys how to pick up on this. Because if you don't know, you'll go to some of these countries. You'll meet a girl, and you'll go from. You'll go from you know getting to know her to meeting her family to the to her to, to them telling you <laughs> my, 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 my father is in debt for, to a local warlord and if I don't pay him twenty thousand American dollars they're going to come and take me I'm not I am not joking guys I'm not joking or for example for example, you go over to another country, you try to open a business, and they tell you, "Oh, you've done something wrong, and we're going to throw you in jail if you don't pay. If you don't pay the, uh, you don't pay the local so and so, um, tw- like uh, five thousand dollars immediately, or you are you're going to be in jail." And the guys, this is the kind of things that these people will do. I'm so serious. But don't, that don't, I don't want to scare you because I want you guys to go. I want you guys to have these experiences. I, and I want you to understand that in that, and that you are not in this danger. You are this much of the danger that you that, that that's going to have that you'll run into is completely imaginary. It's people lying to you and trying to manipulate you because they know you're an American, they know you're alone, and they know that they can try to and they, and they know that you have American money. So they're gonna try to they're going to try to finesse you, all right? Don't let them. And the best way to prevent this from happening is by let, making sure that, one, you always have contacts. You always know people in the country who are also expats, okay? Those are the people that can do something for you. If you end up in jail over there and you are and you need someone who can help you, it's going to be another expat, okay? It will be another expat. It will be someone who is from, from, from your country or even or from your you could be from America, but the person and you met and you met other or other expats, and the person you met is from the UK, and they can still do something for you because they come from an English-speaking country. All right, so they can still do something like reach out to the American embassy, or they can even if they even if they have trouble, they can reach out to someone in their own country, an attorney, and they can figure. Do you see what I'm saying? But you have to know that you want to you want to be with someone who is from your country or a country like your country, okay? That's what that's literally it. But you're gonna learn about this. Are you gonna learn about the way that people will play you? The different ways that you can be smart and how to get what you want. You're gonna learn about the local laws. So by the time you get off that plane, you're gonna know what you need. You're gonna know where to go, and you're also you're also gonna learn about how to screen these women. Like for example, going over there and like you'll have a bunch of women approaching you. It's best to already have something set up by the time you go over there. Sometimes people will tell you, like, oh, it, it really depends. But if you're looking for a relationship, there's a lot of different things you can do. There's a lot of websites you can use that actually screen women for you. All right. It it, it varies. It really varies. There are also different places you can go where you'll find different kinds of women. For example, if you go to a bar, a lot of the times you're gonna you're gonna run into bar girls, but they won't tell you that they're bar girls, all right? Because they're trying to finesse you and they'll play the long game with you, all right? You're gonna learn what you need to do. But men are telling other men to become password bros and never return to Western countries because the, the quality of life is so much better overseas that once you go. Once you go over to these countries, you're, you're, you're going to start to heal. 
mentally and physically, you're going to start to heal. You don't have to have the attitude that everyone's out to get you. And you will meet a lot of very kind people. And the key is to just, the key is one, don't show off your money. Do not show off your money. Don't talk about money with anyone. If people start asking you about questions like, hey, what kind of bank do you use? You know, or what kind of, oh, how much money did you bring with you? Or guys, like, sometimes you'll be, so, listen, you know, they'll start to ask, you'll be surprised. They get to know you and they start to ask you questions that, you know, that at first that seem kind of innocent, right? Things you never thought about or, you know, or like, you know, like what they're trying to do is dig for information, all right? So you're gonna you're gonna learn how to deal with that kind of stuff, all right? I've had to learn the hard way, but I'm gonna share that knowledge with you so that when you travel, you know how to be safe and you already know what to look for, okay? And you know how to get the best deal because you don't want to pay a hundred dollars for a one dollar cup of coffee. A lot of guys are going to the Philippines right now. They're buying women cars. They're buying them expensive things. Some of these women are like, well, if you're doing this for women in America, the, guys. A cup of coffee costs a dollar in the Philippines, and they want you to pay what you're paying for Starbucks. Don't be fooled. Don't be fooled, all right? So you're going to be smart about it because guess what? A, do a dollar cup of coffee is a still a dollar cup of coffee. Even if you pay $100 for it, it's still a $1 cup of coffee. You're just a fool that paid that amount for it. Don't be that guy, all right? But when you go over these countries, my gosh, the high quality life that you're going to live. You, I mean, you guys are going to start to heal. You are going to heal. You're going to be able to, you're going to grab, a, you're going to grab a drink. You're going to walk down to the beach. You're going to sit on the beach. You might meet some people. And the good, like I said, you, it's great. You'll meet great girls. You'll meet great people. But the key is to have other, to be a part of an expat community. Because those are the people that will have your back. Those are the people that will look out for you. All right? Those are the people that will watch. Oh, yeah, I have my friends. I've got some friends over here. When you're when you're a part of an expat community, you are, and, and the locals, the locals, if the locals know you're alone, they'll prey upon you. Oh, this person's by themselves. We can take advantage of them. Oh, no, I've got my friends and I've got my family and oh, I'm not by here by myself. So, oh, well, OK, so, yeah, this person's not alone. Oh, but, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And, you know, you notice that people start asking certain questions. OK, so you start pick, picking up. OK, so this guy's digging for information. Yeah, buddy, I'm good. Yeah, have a good one. All right. I'm so honest. I'm so very honest. Another thing, and I hate to be, I hate to do this to you guys, is also food. You can get poisoned over, I don't, I shouldn't say it's like this, but people will spike your food. So you're going to also learn how, where you can eat and where not to eat and who to eat from. Like, for example, someone invites you to come back to their, one of the locals invites you to come back to their house and have dinner there. Yeah, thanks, thanks, but no thanks. I mean, once, if you get to really know these people, maybe. OK, if you get to really know them and uh, and, you know, it de it depends. But but randomly, no, no, thanks. Because because a lot of times what they're trying to do is suck you in. All right. And you have to, when you are over in these places, you want to have friends. You want to have expats. You want to have these people because these are people that will have your back. And you want to have your attorney. You want to have an attorney in the country. If you're nice. If you go to if you go to the Philippines and then you decide you want to go over to Thailand and Cambodia. Get let me tell you what you're going to do. You are going to have a lawyer in each and every single one of those countries. I don't care. There's some people who are telling, there are some people who will listen to this video and they're going to tell you, listen, this guy's talking a load of nonsense. He's talking a load of crap. You don't need to, any, you don't need to do any of that. These countries are safe. You just listen, this and this and all kinds of other stuff. Yeah, that's fine. I don't care. All right. I don't care. That's, they can do them. I'm going to do me. So listen. Before you, if you're going to go over to, if you're in Philippines and you decide you want to go to Thailand, and guess what you're going to do? You're going to know what you're going to have a lawyer positioned in Thailand. It only costs a few dollars, a few dollars to put them on a retainer. Okay, you're telling me twenty bucks. You can you can spend twenty bucks, twenty thirty dollars, and have them on retainer for six months. Are you are you crazy? Put them on retainer. So if any time anything that happens during that period of time, you're going to do your research. You're going to have a, your or, or or you're going to have someone who does research for you. You're going to know which lawyer is a good lawyer. All right, have someone, and you're going to put them on retainer for like twenty or thirty bucks. Anything happens and they.
secret. And, and they're going to tell you, and you know, certain information they're going to have. They'll have your name. They'll have certain information depending on your relationship with them. If you're gonna, if you're staying in the country, they might have a copy of your passport. They are certain, are, 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 they'll have your primary contact information for your family. They'll have these things, right? So anything that happens in this country, oh yeah, no, you have an attorney. You don't have any worries and you know exactly how to get in touch with them. All right. You have a medical emergency. You have your attorney. You get arrested. You have your attorney. You know, some of the locals are messing with you or people are lying to you and they're telling you nonsense. OK, if you're and you're like and you're and you have your attorney and never let anyone else get an attorney for you. Always get an attorney for yourself. Something I had to learn the hard way, but I'm passing on that knowledge to you. All right. So it doesn't matter where you go. Some of you, one of the things I don't like with some of y'all is you're too damn cheap. Like, and you know what? And when you're very, and when you're cheap, when you're too cheap, like literally some of you, some of you like literally have thousands of dollars in the bank, thousands, tens of thousands of dollars. And you do very stupid things. Like this is, this is, this is, this is the thing I'm talking about. Like you don't invest in yourself. Like there's some of you like who I told you to spend 60 bucks to expedite your passport. You didn't do it. Now it's going to take six months. You would have had your passport in two weeks. Now it's going to take six months and you can't do anything about it because you've already put it because it's now in the application process. And you're like, oh, well, can I expedite it now? No, it's too late. So now you have to wait. And if you know anything, they're telling you, well, it's well, we hope to have it to you within six months. We don't have a specific date or time frame, though. It could be longer than six months because we're back because we're we're backlogged by five hundred thousand right now. One year later, you're still waiting for it. You reach out to the administration, passport administration. You're like, "What's going on with my application?" They're like, "Sorry, we're having, we can't find your application." Or, or and then they're like, "We're gonna have to do a process, and we're gonna have to do a search for your application." And please wait. Three months later, they're still trying to figure it out. And you're like, should I just send it a new application? They're like, no, because we have a history on file that you sent your application, but we don't actually know where your application is because it's backlog. You're just going to have to wait two, <laughs> two years later. Guys, don't let this be you. Spend the 60 bucks, expedite your passport. You're going overseas. Spend the 30 bucks, spend the 50 bucks, put, a, put, put an attorney on retainer for six months. If you're gonna be in a country for 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 you know for a couple of months, put them on retainer. All right, put them on retainer. Have someone there. If you have, if in the United States, you don't even have to put a lawyer on retainer. Just do your research. Speak to a good attorney. Find a good attorney. Build a relationship with them. Okay. I let them know you're planning to travel overseas and that, you know, in case something happens, you want to have somebody that you can reach out to. And, and sometimes they'll say, okay, well, you know what? You can send me certain documents. I'll keep a copy of your ID. I'll keep a copy of this and this and this. Because what that's one thing that lawyers do keep copies of. They keep copies of past information when they've dealt with clients. They still do keep certain things on record. All right? So if something goes wrong, you have somebody. A lot of you are too fucking lazy. I'm sorry. I don't mean to curse, but a lot of you are a lot of you are too lazy. You don't want to you don't want to spend a little bit of money. You don't want to do a little bit of work to cover your own butt so that everything so that when you leave, you're going to have things secure. All right? You're going to have to put in a, it's it's just common sense and it's not very hard. It's not very hard. Okay? But once you get over there and you know where you're going and you've done your research, so you know, for example, in the Philippines, you know which, you know what, you know, you don't, don't just say, I'm going to go to one, you're like, I'm going to go to someplace random. You need to know what you're looking for. You need to know what you want to experience. You need to know what kind of, like, if you want to go to the beach, then maybe, then maybe you will, or maybe you won't go to Cebu because maybe, you know, you, there's a, there's different, pla different places, different experiences. It depends on what you're looking for. I, it depends. I know what I'm looking for, but what I'm looking for may not be what you're looking for. So you have to have that and you have to be flexible. You also have to understand maybe the Philippines might not be the right place for you. Maybe Thailand is the right place for you because there's a certain kind of experience that you're looking for that you're going to get in Thailand. So you have to understand 
You have to understand what the culture is like, operate, and then and then you and then you learn how to stay safe in these places. You'll know what to do, and you'll know how to stay out of trouble, and you'll understand, and then you'll feel safe. Because let me tell you something: when you're in these countries, one thing is one thing very right right now is these people don't want to mess with someone that, that that's an American. They don't want to mess with the American embassy. Okay. They do not want to mess with the American embassy. This is a fact. It is a fact. They don't want to mess with the American embassy. 99% of the time, unless there's unless it's something big. Okay? So this is the truth. So you're going to do your research. You're going to learn. I'm going to have a package for you guys that's going to help you to, like, know how to travel. Also, guys, crypto, crypto, crypto. You need to have a decentralized bank account. I'm going to have my, I'm a cryptocurrency expert. I have a cryptocurrency academy. I'm actually just updating the updating it for you, updating it right now. So they're giving a new code of paint, but you're going to have access to my cryptocurrency academy. You can go there. If you don't know about crypto, you're going to learn everything about crypto at my academy. And you're also going to learn how to create a decentralized bank account so that you can, so basically you can do business from anywhere in the world. You have access to your funds from anywhere in the world. No matter what happens, you have access to money. Okay. Even if all your credit cards were to get shut down, even if you lost, if, even if you lost your wallet, you lost your wallet, your credit cards are gone. Your bank cards are gone. Okay. Everything is gone. You have access. You have access to, uh, you have access to money. That's the, that's the beauty of crypto. You have access to money and you can immediately within within like a few minutes, within a few within a few minutes, you can um you have a plan, you have an action plan, you know? Or what happens if you lose your passport, you lose your ID, you know? Well, I have all of that. I have a I have I have I have a package coming out that's gonna teach you that will have all of that in there for you too, to teach you how to how to protect yourself. But yeah, crypto is another big one. And then there's also remote work which is something, my micro jobs. What did this guy say in the video? He actually went over to the Philippines. He left He left, left everything behind, and now he's just doing YouTube, and he's living off the YouTube money, all right? He's living off the YouTube money. A lot of people, $1,000 a month. People, A lot of people live in the Philippines, expats live in the Philippines, and they don't break $1,000 a month, all right? They do not spend more than a thousand a month, and they are living high quality lives. They're living; they have a swimming pool. They, they where they live is extremely safe. It is wonderful. All right. But guys, that's what I have for you right now. Men are telling other men to become password bros and never return to Western countries. And this is this is it. Men are going to go overseas. They're going to form new lives. They're going to find happiness, and that's how, that's how it's going to be. Let's go ahead and watch the rest of the video. couldn't really handle the stress of the business that I was running and the, the hassles and people trying to rob me and the, you know, family arguing and the um, politics and the anger and just all that stuff was just enough for me to say, you know what, I've had it. I have an exit plan and I have a way out. I know you're not allowed to do this and you got to stay and argue with your family and you got to stay and work your ass off till you look like shit. But I said, fuck it. I still got a little bit left in the tank here. I still look a little bit younger than I am. I still got the energy to walk 10 miles a day. Um, and I'm going to jump ship at 45 rather than 65 and be a tired old man whose only value, uh, you know, in my case, because I'm not a Don, a young Don Johnson or anything, uh, it's probably going to be his bank account at that point. Um, there are guys like my dad that, uh, you know, still quite the quite the uh, savage stud at 79. But you know what? I don't know. I just felt like coming out at 45 and just uh, trying my trying my market value out now and, and just enjoying these turquoise waters. So that's why I left and threw my life away in the United States. And, you know, probably wouldn't be a bad idea for you to do the same if you're not leaving young children behind. And you got, I don't know, 50 grand. Come out with 50 grand. And uh, if you can't find a way to make one digital dollar, go home in four years. That's assuming you don't get a girlfriend and you spend, you know, 1100 bucks a month or something. That's what I would do. If that was to happen, you spent four years in paradise, four years you never forget, probably dated 
did some of the most beautiful women you've ever dated. You probably soaked up the sun and sat in some Caribbean style beaches like this. And, uh, you know, come back at 50 years old and, you know, settle back into Groundhog Day. But uh, it probably won't happen to you because you'll hit it big on YouTube. You'll do Cambly. You'll meet a Filipina and start a business. You'll become a consultant. You will find some way to make a digital dollar, trade crypto, stocks, whatever the case may be. But listen, that's why I threw my life away in the United States and came to the white sand beaches of Boracay Island, Philippines, for a while, ano, sana, all. Now, guys, if there's one thing I also know how to do is I know YouTube. Many of you look at my YouTube channel and, you know, looking at my channel, you can look at my videos and some of you wonder, how do I put out videos so quickly? And yeah, part of it is I don't sleep. I work around the clock. But there's also a lot of tricks that I use so that I can create videos, create content rapidly. All right. I know how to make money on YouTube, even as a small content creator. Okay. Even having, I mean, guys. Even being a small content creator, I know how to create money on, make money on YouTube, and I'm going to teach you how to do that. You don't need 50, 50 or 100,000 subscribers to make money on YouTube. You don't need, guys, you don't need even 20,000 subscribers on YouTube. You can make a massive income on YouTube with just 10,000 subscribers. When I say massive income, I'm talking about hundreds of thousands of dollars a year with just 10 thousand subscribers and that's the truth and that's that's at the higher end that's at the higher end if you really put it all put it in the work you can make hundreds of thousands of dollars a year from just ten thousand subscribers on youtube you're going to say well how the heck can i do that well for one when some guys get into coaching coaching and creating programs certain programs if you have ten thousand subscribers guys and then you need to do a little bit of math from those ten thousand subscribers a certain percentage of your subscribers usually if you're you know, if your channel is aimed towards adults, you know, and you have and your private and you have guys, people between the ages of 30 and 45 or 54 on there, you have to understand that even a small percentage of them are going to have a massive amount of disposable income and are or a reasonable amount of disposable income. So these are people that are will that are able to spend one thousand, two thousand, three thousand, sometimes five thousand or even ten thousand dollars in a single go. Okay. And they and what happens is once you create once you establish yourself as an authority in something, all right, you can use that and people are going to pay you. They're going to pay you for your knowledge because this world is entirely based around information. You go to the doctor, you're going to the doctor for information. The doctor knows knows something that you don't know. You're paying them for their knowledge. How often do you go to the doctor today and the doctor does not even touch you? All right. You just tell them your symptoms and they give you medication. I'm not I'm not joking. All right? You go you go guys, you are this entire world it's about information and influence. All right? There are many different ways to make money. Many different ways, the micro jobs, YouTube, a variety of different ways. And you're going to learn how to do this. You're going to learn how to free yourself from the matrix and find happiness once and for all. Because he, something he said that was very important. A lot of guys, the average age for, for, for men in the United States is 73. The average age for women is 79. That's a huge age gap. That's a six-year age gap. Why is it so large? A hundred years ago, it was not that large. Even with the Great Depression and men working in working in coal mines and 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 and, and working in the fields, the, the 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 age gap was not that large. All right. Even a hundred years ago, even when men were working, living in terrible, working in terrible conditions, the age gap was not that large between men and women. And now it's it's six years, six years. Okay, and you know what the sad thing is? A lot of you don't even realize. Many of you won't even make it to like that. 73, 73 is the average years. Is the average age. A lot of y'all will be lucky if you make it to that age, living with the amount of stress and misery and frustration in the U.S. There's some of y'all. You'll have money in the bank. You'll be lonely, and you'll tell yourself, "I don't care. I've got my money." There was a guy. There was a guy, and, I, and rest in, rest, I may, may God rest his soul, and I've talked about him. 
His name was Venshin One. Venshin One. And he lived this life. And he was he went his own way for 20 years. 20 years. And he tried to bring a lot of men with him. And he did. And he convinced a lot of men to not have children, not get not date, not have any relationship. And what happened to him? Vengeance ended up getting a terminal illness. And he had no one when he passed away. And, to, and from what I heard, he had a bunch. He was one of the first people to invest in Bitcoin. He had to sell his house. He like moved down to Mexico and he passed away by himself with no one around him. And when he passed away, the MGOTO community uh, praised him for what he did. And there's a lot of these guys that are on my channel that will say, I will not, it's, it's their business. It's their choice. If they want to completely disengage with society and they want to have relationships with no one, that's your choice. But don't bring everyone down with you because that's a hard life to live. And I get it. Your, your life has been hard on you and you're not taking the risk. You've risked a lot. I'm not telling you to, but I'm telling y'all, I'm telling you guys right now, don't listen to some of these guys. Cause there's, there's a lot of these guys, not only are there, not only will they not have relationships, I'm talking about dates or, or anything. They won't even travel. They won't even leave the U S they're like, I have got, they're like, I'm going to stay where exactly where I am. I'm not going to work more than I have to. And I'm disengaging from society. And that's, it. And that's your choice. But guys, there's with the stress, life is for living. And if you want to, if that's how you want to spend the rest of your life, what's left of it, just hiding out in your home, playing video games and sleeping. If that's your, if that's your thing, go ahead. But if you want to have more, if you want to go out and be able to walk on the sandy beaches and to travel and to see things and to experience things and just to, and to try, try a fruity drink that's brilliant and to talk to some people talk to an australian who's a, who has this incredibly goofy accent and you absolutely love it all right and make and make some of the greatest one of the greatest friends i've ever had was from australia all right guys once you're a once you're a man from a white western country you're all in it to, and you're an expat you're all in it together i'm telling you the honest to goodness truth once you are a once you're an expat and you come from a white Western country, it doesn't matter if you're an American, Australian, or or are you are you from the UK, white Western country that speaks English, right? Or even once you're from a white Western country, and then and then you and you speak English, okay, America, Australia, the UK, Canada. Let me explain this to you right now. You're all in it together. That's it. Okay, you're all in it together. The cultures are not very different. This is the same crap. Y'all are doing y'all are experiencing the exact what men are experiencing in the US, men are experiencing in the UK. What men are experiencing in the UK, men are experiencing in Canada. It's it, these these countries are there, it's, it's the same crap. It's the same crap. Okay. So you will find you will find people who have like minds and you'll develop relationships and friendships and you'll build new lives and you'll learn from one from one another all right anyway guys i've been ranting i've been ranting for uh for almost 40 minutes so i mean guys life is for a living for those of you that don't like that that want to just stay inside you don't want to go anywhere you don't want to spend you you don't want to have any relationships you don't want to do anything different that's fine i that's on you you know, but for those of you that want to get out, want to live your life, want to explore, want to do something else, want to do something different and understand that, listen, there's a such there, female nature is real, but so is culture. And what's happening in the U.S. is completely abnormal. What's happening in the U.K. and Canada and, and Australia, these white Western countries, this this relationship between the men and women and, and, and the insanity that people are living with and an extraordinary amount of expense and consumerism. This is ex, this is extremely abnormal. It is not normal. It is only because these countries have reached reached a point of saturation where they're now on the decline. I've talked to you guys about the mouse utopia. All right. For those of you that don't know about the mouse utopia, Google it on YouTube. All right. I'll make another video on it probably eventually. But this is the mouse utopia. But the difference between the mouse utopia and us is that we can leave. 
and we can leave and we can go to places where this where these things have not happened the, the saturation hasn't happened guys western society is declining the rest of the world is growing india is still growing the africa is going to have a population and by 2100 africa's population will be somewhere from 3.4 billion to 4 billion people there was Africa is the next supercontinent. Most of so much of Africa is essentially unexplored and untapped. So you're going to have massive development in Africa. Africa is going to end up becoming like the United States and other Western countries. It's going to have the, the population in Africa is relatively young. In the, in the United States, we have a massive old population. In Western societies, we have we, we have rapidly aging populations. In Africa and many of these other countries in Asia, they have young populations. There's a massive amount of, of opportunity in countries like the Philippines because they have such a young population as well. So there's, mu there's so much room for growth. We call these blue ocean markets. These are blue ocean territories because the rules haven't been written yet. Everyone's in, 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 in the West. Every, we have red oceans because the waters are all bloodied. Everyone's, the rules have already been written and everyone's fighting for scraps. And these other countries, there's so much, you know, the rules have, industries still have not been established yet. The gr grounds have not been broken. There's so much land that has not been touched yet. Uncharted waters, so you can make the rules. You can start a new life over there. You can actually, it's like, it's a new, it's a new horizon. It's the new West, all right? It's the new West. That's what I'll call these countries. The, these countries, they're the new West. East is the new West. It's an untapped gold mine. Guys, that's all I have for you right now. Like the video if you like it. Don't forget to subscribe. And if you like the video, share the video. And just remember that all roads lead to, lead to MWA men walking away and cheers.